come across country morning, there's going to be a lot of people on bicycle. A lot of men, young men, older men, in their gear, looking ready for the journey. But not everybody is a contender. Some, they call them pretenders. Cross country is going to have a separation of the boys from the men, as they say, the sheep from the goat. For a while, there will be a lot of riders. There's a select few that you can call the actual engineers, the architects of that race that are going to have such an impact just by being out there. They're those that will be watched, those whose every move is going to result in counter moves all day long. That's the way it works. Everybody's going to know where the defending champion is. Everybody's going to know where the main players are. And the game of cat and mouse is going to unfold between Belize City and San Ignacio and back. In today's final episode of the Cross Country Preview that we've been doing, we interview a couple of them that are not going to be pretending at all. These are the men, these are the riders that will determine ultimately how it's going to be ridden and ultimately will have a lot to say in determining who's going to wear the garland. Uh, it's, a, it's going to be an interesting year. You got to look at a few different things. You look at the riders that are coming. You look at the temperature the, uh, and where it's going to be the hottest on the road. For me, uh, like this race is really interesting because it's so long. But if you don't put the effort in early, then you could be left at the back. And so it's a hard race to kind of, um, it's a hard race to plan for until you get in the race. So in the first like 10 miles, I'll understand based off of what the field is doing, what my reaction should be. That's Justin Williams, a two-time champion. But there's been some talk that he has not fared well when the Guatemalans are in the race. Uh, every time the Guatemalans have come here, they, they, didn't, no one, they wouldn't allow me to bring a team. So it'd be four Guatemalans or three Guatemalans, and then it'd be me and Corey. And then we got to deal with the Belizeans, the Americans, and the Guatemalans. So it's everybody versus us. Um, they're strong riders, like the, uh, the Padilla brothers are very good riders, so it makes sense that, they're, that they, they've done well here. Um, but for me, it's not something that I really think about. Um, I just have to base my, I have to try to race based off of like what the, the situation is. So whether they're here or not, the, the race is the race is the race. You need a little bit of luck. Um, and then you still just have to deal with the factors that come. The problem when the Guatemalans come is that all of the Belizeans kind of like, uh, all of the Belizeans are trying to like work together, but they're typically stronger than we are, so. While Justin has indicated that he's not in peak form, he feels that on any given Holy Saturday, things can still go his way. So when you, when you, when you train and you build fitness, what it gives you is consistency. So even if you aren't, even if I'm not 100%, even if I'm like 80% or 75%, you could be good for one day. And so basic, basically whatever your taper is, whatever your preparation is to the race, you never know what you're going to get. So for me, I, I could see it happening just depending on how the race um, unfold. If it's a, a bigger group and I can kind of sit in and hide all day, uh, I still have a, I'm still one of the fastest guys in the field. So uh, if it comes down to a sprint, I'm always going to be dangerous. While Justin has number three on his mind, Byron Pope is still in search of his first. Some of us, a.k.a. Madaraka, have been close in cross country 2022. I'll put in the work for 2024 to try to at least get back on the podium or try to win it. I've been close on numerous times. I have four top 10 finishes. I'm getting well, I'm still around, but I believe my chances are right up there with, with the foreigners. Okay, you have been, you, you are on that list where nobody wants the fan of the greatest who have not won the cross country. That's on a list where nobody <laughs> wants the fan. Unfortunately, you got some man, you know, and you're smiling. You got bandon tattoos. Like, Marlon. Yeah, Marlon, because you're like, Everybody knew them great, but that one thing eludes them. Um, how much you think about that? How, how, how often you think about that? That 
that that's one of the things that bothers me the most. Um, Madaraka. Um, I have won the junior cross country, and some of the guys that came and won the junior cross country, like for example, our current champ, Oscar Kiros, he won the junior and he came and he won the elite. I really want my too. Guys from my era, I have two guys from my era that won cross country, 2012 with Giovanni Choto, and 2013 with my buddy, Darnell Barrow. They are all junior, we are all juniors together. So I really, really, really feel like I, I want one too, but we have a lot of people who want one, we want to try to stop your phone and get one. Most, I'll be honest with you, right? Um, it's stressful. It's really stressful for a rider like me. You could ask anybody in the cycling arena, up to now, from Belize to Kyle, Corozal to Belize, PG, who is one of the most dedicated cyclists. It's me. I put a lot of sacrifice. I got you a lot of quarrel home. Just for one, uh, be at a good level or be at my best. I believe one thing I learned, one thing I learned from the late great Albert Pope, if you are doing something, do it to the best of your ability and that will keep me going, that keep me pushing forward. Sometimes I feel like I give up, like if you notice most, I'm right here standing. I used to have big sponsors, but now I, I ride on a small team. It's just five of us. I've been in teams where it was 10 and 8 and the sponsorship was there, but for me right now, it, it's rough. Sometimes I'm out there, I feel like giving up, but I just keep going because I have a goal and my goal is to try to ride one cross country with my son coming up. That's my goal. My, I did it with my dad in 2006 and I want to do it with my son coming up in the future. They've come from Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, USA, with one purpose in mind, to snatch and traffic and take our beautiful garland out of Belize. Like cowboys from the Wild West, these riders are comfortable being the villains of the script. We found them not at a fancy hotel. They were acclimating on Lewis Bevan Street, Port Loyola, South Side, Belize City. Really? Clayton, we expected to mm -hmm. find our, our opponents at, at the, one of the fancy hotels. You guys are on Lewis Bevan Street in Port Loyola, South Side, Belize City. Mm -hmm. Talk about fully acclimating yourselves to, 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 to Belizean uh, culture, no? Yeah, yeah. Charles has been gracious enough to host us for a number of years and been coming down here and staying here uh, as long as I've been coming down. And uh, I don't know, it's always great to stay with the local family and they take us to, uh, you know, local restaurants and we eat the Belizean food and, you know, we love it down here. So, so yeah. Belizean food, Belizean neighborhoods, and mm -hmm. then you want the Belizean garland. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> uh, that's, that's the goal. That's why we came down here. We understand, uh, we, you know, that word spreads fast, you know, before mm -hmm. cross country. We start to hear about the names that are going to come and then people start to tell you who to fare. Right. Clayton, my understanding is, is that you are a rider to be feared. You are the guy mm. that comes here to bring pain mm. to us on Holy Saturday. <laughs> yeah, uh, I've been training pretty well this year. Uh, I'm feeling good. I um, had success back in 2019 on New Year's Day. Uh, but this is my first running of the Holy Saturday. So I'm hoping that I can, I can you know, bring it home. You, I, uh... You know, I'm excited to be down here with, you know, with John, who's very excited to win. You know, this is one of his bucket list items. He wants to win. He's very motivated. Clayton, who's physically capable of winning. Uh, Max, a young guy we're bringing down for the first time. I, you know, I would love to win this race for myself. You know, I'd love to be in a position to race, but I think we come down as a team and as a unit. And I think if we can work together collectively, we all bolster our, you know, uh, the ability for one of us to be in a position to win it. And I'm more than happy for any one of the guys I'm traveling with to win this thing. And you wear the, you wear the uh, attire of villainhood comfortably? You are okay being uh, put in this uh, script as the villain? I, I didn't know we were. Are you putting us in the script you're as the villain? You're absolutely <laughs> I, I, the villain in this script, man. <laughs> you didn't notice? No. Man, man. Oh, I, I, I should shout, uh, one of the foreigners are here on Lewis Bevan Street. That would make, bring some attention this time. Uh, I, I, I'm happy to be the villain. If it means taking the garland home with me, I'm happy to be the villain. 
it's it's up my alley this is the stuff i like from all i've heard it sounds like a really nice event from the videos i've seen it looks beautiful i mean people lining the roads for 100 miles it sounds sounds pretty cool i mean as a gravel i come from gravel and road background so this is all up my alley all so yes yes sir the whole saturday course country cycling classic matters it's almost as a qualifying feature to know you're a Belizean. That when Holy Saturday comes and you hear the bugle, you know what you need to do. Turn on my radio, turn on my TV, because you have to know, you have to hear, you have to watch. And to the end, whether bitter or sweet, it's all about the classic. We invite you to join our coverage, of course, and uh, enjoy every aspect of the race, the good, the bad, the in-between. It's been a great pleasure looking at this race, previewing it and talking to those who have the unique perspective and knowledge about the race. Reporting for XTV, I'm Moose Hyde.